Hi guys, today we're at the Beatty Biodiversity Museum. This museum has a collection of over 2 million biological specimens and also has the largest blue whale skeleton found in Canada. Let's go explore. UBC's natural history collections were put on display for the first time when the Beatty Biodiversity Museum opened its doors in 2010. Since then, the museum has received over 35,000 visitors each year. The museum has 20,000 square feet of collections and 500 exhibits for display. One of the purposes of the collection is to collect and preserve specimens of a species over multiple decades to monitor changes in size, diet, habitat, migration, and other clues to show how the species has adapted to life today and has been altered since the first specimen was collected. The museum is made up of six collections, including tetrapods, marine invertebrates, entomological specimens with 500,000 pinned insects, the second largest collection in Canada, a collection of fish that holds over 850,000 specimens, the herbarium, and fossils. Some notable rare specimens in the collection include the red panda, the endangered Vancouver Island marmot, and even extinct species like the passenger pigeon. The jewel of the collection is the blue whale specimen, Blue whales rarely get stranded on beaches, and as a result, very few skeletons have ever been recovered for research or display. The Beatty Biodiversity Museum is home to Canada's largest blue whale skeleton. Worldwide, there's only 21 of these specimens available for public viewing. This blue whale specimen washed ashore in 1987 on Prince Edward Island on the east coast of Canada. The remains sat there for over 20 years before a team from UBC returned to the beach and unearthed the skeleton. The bones were brought to the west coast, and then an effort was made to clean and repair the skeletons and re-articulate them for display. The upper part of this whale's skull was severely damaged, so researchers believe that the animal died from a collision with a ship. As part of the reconstruction, the team analyzed, cast, and reconstructed the remains of the skull. Blue whales have been known to grow up to 180 tons. This specimen was likely about 150 tons, the same as 33 full-grown elephants. The lower jawbone of the blue whale is the largest single bone of any living animal. The ones seen here over 25 feet long and weigh 1,200 pounds each. In the tetrapods area, you can see specimens of mammals and other vertebrates. This is an egg from an elephant bird, which is the largest bird known to have ever lived. It's now extinct, but it once stood over three meters tall. For size comparison, you can see this black-chinned hummingbird egg in front of it. Believe it or not, this isn't the smallest bird egg in the world. That actually belongs to the bee hummingbird, which produces an egg even smaller than this one. This shimmering specimen is a Himalayan monal. The iridescent blue color is actually a result of light refracting off microscopic structures inside the feather. This is true for other birds as well. Blue pigments are never actually found in bird feathers. This great bustard is the heaviest flying animal alive today and can reach weights of over 35 pounds. This is a boat-billed heron from Mexico. Its beak is used like a shovel to scoop up fish, crabs, shrimp, and insects from out of the water. This is a melanistic jaguar known as a black panther. They're actually the same species as the more common yellow form of jaguar. Its color is caused by increased production of the dark pigment melanin and occurs in about 6% of the jaguar population in South America. This exhibit talks about how evolution works through a series of slight mutations to existing characteristics. Over thousands and millions of generations, evolution will change how the animals look and live and allow animals with certain characteristics to thrive while other characteristics will cause them to struggle. Some interesting examples of evolution is this Sunda pangolin, whose tongue isn't attached to its throat but actually to a bone near its pelvis. The eggs of common mirrors have adapted based on their habitat on the edge of a rocky cliff. The patterns on each egg are unique so that parents can keep track of their own young, and the pear shape of the egg helps it roll in a circle rather than off the side of the cliff. Oh. 
This exhibit talks about how land snails are among the most endangered animals on Earth due to decades of worldwide trade and harvesting. These creatures are often gathered for their distinctive shells, like the spiral shape seen on this virgin ligvus land snail, or the stunning neon coloration of this Manus Island green tree snail. These carrier snails like to camouflage themselves for protection by gluing other objects to their shells. The snails secrete a certain type of calcium carbonate which allows the decorations to be cemented in place. Researchers are busy investigating the abilities of these echinoderms like starfish and brittle stars who have the ability to regenerate whole sections of their body after they're severed. The bright metallic coloring in butterflies helps confuse predators and is also used by butterflies to communicate with each other. This fossil is of an extinct fish species that lived approximately 50 million years ago in the area of Wyoming. The fossil was created when low oxygen levels caused the fish to suffocate and sink to the bottom of the river where they were gradually covered in fine limestone mud. These fossilized echinoids are sometimes known as fairy loafs because of their resemblance to a round loaf. And these strange fossils are known as devil's toenails said to be cast off by the devil himself. This exhibit, provided by the Peace Region Paleontology Research Centre, shows three different dinosaur trackways all found in British Columbia. Another cool exhibit is this 100 foot long timeline which represents the 4.5 billion year long history of life on Earth. This exhibit gives you a real sense of scale, how it took over a billion years from the time when the Earth first formed, to when the oceans filled and the first single celled organisms arose and then another billion years before biological processes evolved enough to begin forming oxygen and change the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, it's only in the last 500 million years that you start to see signs of life as we know it, with the evolution of aquatic life, land mammals, plants, and finally right down at the end here, the emergence of modern Homo sapiens within the last 200,000 years. They also have an incredible collection of wet specimens, like these snakes in a jar, these juvenile sturgeon, and these ratfish specimens. Thanks for joining us to explore the collection at the BD Biodiversity Museum. If you enjoyed this video, we're heading off on another adventure. Why don't you join us? Until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.